we will develop a formulation for a strain energy of a screw dislocation so we consider a right handed screw dislocation lying along the z axis so this is our right handed screw dislocation and this axis is the z axis or x3 axis and we will take the dislocation to be lying in as an axis of a cylinder of radius r this is a cylinder of radius r and the dislocation line is at at the axis of that cylinder this will be my x axis and this will be y axis an alternative notation this is x1 this is x2 and this is x3 so this is the configuration the right handed screw dislocation lying along the z axis as the axis on the axis of a cylinder and let us say that this cylinder let us give it a finite length finite length l so a screw dislocation of length l is what we are considering so we know that elastic strain energy per unit volume of any body is given as half stress times strain i have written sigma ij times epsilon ij which means we are summing up the products of stress and corresponding strain and you know both i and j i will be going from 1 to 1 to n3 and j will be going from 1 to n3 so there are actually nine terms in this so if we write try to write those in a terms it will be like half sigma 1 1 epsilon 1 1 plus sigma 1 2 epsilon 1 2 up to sigma 3 3 epsilon 3 3 so these are the nine terms this is our in a cartesian system in a cartesian coordinates however the screw the screw dislocation which i showed you the screw dislocation the stress and strain field of this dislocation line it's cylindrically symmetrical that is at any given radius r at any given radius r the stress and strain field are same if we use the cylindrical coordinate system so it's better to use cylindrical coordinate system and in the cylindrical coordinate system we can write the same expression same nine terms in terms of r theta and z like this so this is this expression is in cylindrical coordinate system and in this system both the stress and strain field have a very simple formulation for a right handed screw dislocation only a pair of terms sigma theta z and sigma z theta sigma theta z and sigma t because of the symmetry of stress and strain field these two are equal and the corresponding terms of the strain field are equal and they have these values so the stress fee stresses are equal to mu b by 2 pi r whereas strains are equal to b by 4 pi r and we are using the standard notation here so b 
is the Burgess vector magnitude of the Burgess vector Burgess vector and mu is the shear modulus modulus and all other terms are zero so we have a very simplistic expression all these terms all these other stress terms and the corresponding strain terms also all these are zero these are all zero so essentially we are left with only some of these two terms both of them are equal and they have these values so you can see that this entire nine terms will finally give you a very simple expression that half then sigma theta z mu b by 2 pi r mu b by 2 pi r epsilon theta z b by 4 pi r that's for this term and this term as you can see is exactly equal because sigma z theta is also mu b by 2 pi r and epsilon z theta is also b by 4 pi r this is by the symmetry of stress and strain tensors so the other term is also equal to this so we simply multiply this expression by 2 so we get mu b square by 8 pi square r square this is recall that this is in strain energy per unit volume at a radial distance r from the dislocation line so we now again look at the dislocation line which is lying at the center of my cylinder so along along the z axis which is now in this figure is going into the plane of the paper and i am taking A small radius R naught as the radius of the core because you see all both of these expression the stress and strain terms diverge as you go close to the dislocation at R tending to zero both the stress and strains are infinity this is obviously not possible this is simply indicating that the elastic solutions are not true very close to the dislocation so to avoid that one always assumes a core of radius r naught where we do not apply these elastic solutions so that is the core radius so r naught is my core radius and the full radius of the cylinder is capital R and then at a distance what we have found an expression for strain energy per unit volume at a distance R so the volume element which we will select is a small annulus annular region between R between R and R plus dr so this is small thickness of this annular region is dr so let us write this expression now what is the elastic energy 
within this volume element. So from the expression which we have developed, we can write this. So first, the strain energy per unit volume at the location R we have already developed is mu b square by 8 pi square r square. This is energy per unit volume. We want to find out the energy in this annular or annular cylindrical volume. So we will multiply this by the volume of that element and that is the area, the hatched area which we have. Let us uh, write that. So that is simply 2 pi r which is the circumference of that cyl cylindrical area into dr. So that is that hatched area which I have shown this hatched area and multiplied by L the length of the cylinder which is perpendicular to the plane of the paper. So area times the length, this is the area and this is length. So this, this whole term gives us the volume element dv, the volume. So 2 pi r dr into L is the volume, so strain energy per unit volume times the volume gives us the energy in this element and all we have to do now so let me cancel some terms so 2 cancels with 8 so we get 4 pi cancels with pi and r cancels r square in that way so this gives us Finally, mu b square by 4 pi into dr by r into L. So, this is the energy L energy in this shell. So, to get the energy in the entire crystal of radius r, of course, excluding the energy of the core, we write E which is an integration of this differential energy dE which we can write as mu b square L by 4 pi dr by r. So it turns out to be a very simple integral and the limits will be from the core radius r naught to the crystal radius r. And as you know that this is very easy to integrate mu b square l by 4 pi this is just logarithm of r by r naught this l which is the length of the dislocation so that can be brought in to the right hand side so we can write energy per unit length and we can further qualify that this is this is elastic energy so elastic energy per unit length of a screw dislocation EL equal to total energy divided by the length L mu v square by 4 pi log of r by r naught. 
this is our final expression r is radius of crystal and r naught is the core radius so this is the elastic part of the dislocation line because we are ignoring the energy in the core the energy in the core cannot be calculated by the elastic formulation because the situation there is highly non-elastic so that's why sometimes if we want to include that we can write e total is equal to e core plus e elastic where e elastic is what we have derived in this formula. Thank you.